Hey everyone, it's another day and we don't have electricity. We lost our power yesterday evening. I've asked them just not to open the refrigerator and I called and reported it and the neighbors called and reported it on the outage. They gave us an estimated time to be back up at 2.30 in the morning. I uh, laughed with my naive neighbor across the street that takes that at face value <laughs> that 2.30 in the morning on which morning and he said oh no they said you know today's day and then I said uh, they, I think they said on the 24th or something like that and then I said the 24th of which month because we know they are slow I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they may have quite a few people out, but I don't know. We're isolated, kind of in the dark on it. Really haven't bothered, like, to go all out there checking, you know. I hadn't even bothered to turn on a radio, to be honest. You know what? Kind of enjoying it, you know. Unplugged. But unplugged also means you'll lose all your stuff in your freezer, right? Some of you viewers already mentioned that. You know, you freeze all this stuff, you're going to lose all this stuff. Well, there's always ways around it. And uh, I'll show you here my little temporary way this morning. So I've got a generator down there at the shop. It's a welder generator that I could bring up here. I really don't want to listen to all the noise. So... I have this big inverter. This isn't no little inverter. This is a huge inverter. Um, I've got it on one brand new deep cycle battery that's never been used. I had it setting for our fifth wheel. I could get a second one if I need it. I hook these jumper cables up to my pickup here. That way I can pull from the truck battery and charge some from my alternator. I'd rather listen to my pickup get inside the truck, run the AC if I need it to, listen to the radio and truck if I need it to, then listen to a loud generator. Isn't that right? So this thing's putting out power. Plugged it up here on the refrigerator and it's been running. So, not a problem. Meanwhile, I'm gonna make coffee. So, here I am making coffee. This is why we like to have a propane stove. I've been through this. We're out on the end of a power grid. We we're like their last customers on their line before a different utility company picks up from another area. So, just boil this water, pour it up in some insulated cups here, make up some instant coffee, and enjoy my nice oil lamps. When you live out in the country like we do, you make provisions. You keep stuff like this right here. It's just camping. I mean, come on, people. Every time power's out, people act like it's the end of the world. Just some simple little measures, and you can just move right on. So today I'm being with my garden. So since uh, been raining last night, so I want to check uh, how they looks over there. So today I harvesting some okra and uh, so I check the corn. So when I check it once, so they are ready, ready, right? Yeah, you went ahead they and shucked ready. it. What yeah, what happened to the end of it here? The worm eating. Oh, so you gave the worm its share yes, and you took I gave the rest. Share, yeah, well, it looks like you still greedy. came out with the better end of the deal. Yeah, that's right. I'm not yeah. that greedy, you know. Let right. Me so enjoy it. share it with them. I <laughs> Let's see what you got here. So, yeah, you picked some nice corns there, and yes. you went in and shucked them. And Let's course. eat those today. Yeah. Let's eat these today. That's nice. And, of course, lots of okra, I see. Yeah, every day I'm picking those uh, okra. She told me that she took a little bit of broccoli, but she said this broccoli wasn't her good broccoli. Yeah. That some. she just wanted to go ahead and take this one. She said she has some really nice ones down there. Yeah. What else you got down in here, Mo? I just only pick up some few tomatoes. They're not really ripe, but uh, just yeah, them up. green ones this can be good too. Now yeah. these are those. Oh my God, cherry tomato. Yeah, but the color to them is so unique. They look like they're not done, but actually they are. I'm just only picking them, but just only stay for. What a nice flavor! 
Pretty you had some of these, and I sliced up and put on that sandwich yesterday. Right. Oh my God, they, they were those. good. Those, you know, they are so sweet. Though. They are. Got you another little squash there yeah, too. Yeah, I'm just rushed. I'm just excited to show you the corn, so instead <laughs> of stop uh, harvesting more. I see you had one yeah. one little odd fellow corn here. <laughs> I'm just come over here and fetching you to we, maybe we can harvest together. Yeah. Good luck. Then. <laughs> I can harvest myself though, I enjoy it. So, you told me you had some cantaloupes and watermelons growing yes. right now too. you know the cantaloupe is big like this already. Yeah. And the uh, watermelons uh, like this. And uh -huh. they're, they're going big. I hope they grow before we leave. Yeah. I, I would like to eat some of those before we leave. Yeah. Before Patrick comes by here picking them and taking them home with him and munching down. Yeah, there's a lot of my tomatoes there also, you know, but of course I can't help those tomatoes fell, you know, like fell down because of the... Wind. Those hard winds. Yeah, hard wind. People don't understand that even if we had them on a trellis, mm -hmm. these winds have been hard, breaking trees everywhere. They'll take down a tree, they'll take down a tomato, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was thinking that when we get ready to leave, let's just cut everything cut the watermelon vines the cucumbers the cantaloupes just take the scissors and cut them all so that we can starve patrick <laughs> <laughs> so that no, nobody benefits that i only ask yeah let's be greedy oh my goodness yeah let's be greedy <laughs> you know i think patrick's gonna be too lazy to go out there anyway if it's not right there in front of him, already picked, cut, chilled, you know, prepared, I think he's not going to even bother with it. The food was already ready in front yeah. of him, you know, that's, it's ready to eat. The Patrick not going to effort to picking those. Uh, I know. I don't even know if he has a knife that could slice a watermelon. <laughs> He'd probably be trying to do it with a lawnmower blade. He can use, he can, he can use his... Uh, mouth you know to just eat directly he's probably using his lawnmower as a food processor because him and that dang lawnmower he thinks he's driving a big old huge john deere tractor patrick see that one yeah this is the beat up patrick video day wow i'm so happy to see my corn that they growing good actually so here it is this is melinda's corn she picked today and i just wanted to show y'all something you do with corn this is how you prepare corn to eat right here. Mm. Is there a sweet corn, you know? Mm. No grilling, no butter, I think it's no sweet. cooking. I think it's sweet mm. though. Delicious. Yeah, I didn't know that I'm raising goat over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got corn in my teeth. Mmm. <laughs> mm. How do it taste? Can it, I try it's so the sweet. grill? Mm -hmm. See, I want to be a pizza. You gotta go. Nah, nah, nah. Oh man, <laughs> all, those, all those teeth you got, and I thought you'd have a big old bite. Man, like, it's good. Uh, it's. I thought it'd be like. Actually, they're more tasty than the even you cook it. You know, I mean, the, when they are nice raw, you they're more. Right yeah. Yep. I love raw corn like that, fresh. That is the mm. best thing. Oh my god. You know what? I was shocked though, because I thought with those teeth. It would have a big old huge bite. <laughs> but like, actually, it's a little bite. Like a, like it, it, it's it, me with the big seems bite. Seems like the squirrel been <laughs> eating those. <laughs> That's funny. So Miss Melinda just showed up here on the four-wheeler. Had this crate on the back of it. And she went ahead and harvested her corn. What she's going to do is just trim off any of this stuff like this. Yeah, where worms had got. And... Um, clean it and freeze it the wind if you just you just wouldn't believe the winds we've had here in north texas in fact we went without power last night um and it has just decimated her corn so she said it because we're going to be leaving anyway and that the worms are starting to get to it and we don't believe in pesticides and insecticides that she would just go ahead and harvest it yeah. And it's still not bad. When you chop that off right there, still I mean, brittle. you still got 
a nice ear of corn right there, and you can cut that one in half. You can think make, make two perfect. pieces out of it. Because we're also warm in birds eating it, you know. Yeah, to where it's about the same length as that one. And man, those are perfect size. That's a lot like you get packaged in a yeah, store. Yeah, exactly. Just only cut the the bad the stuff there. So she's got this this crate full right here, and she has more scattered around up here too. Look at she's got other things here. Uh, varieties of different types of tomatoes and let me tell you you see these jokers right here these are the ones that are just so sweet. deliciously mm -hmm. sweet it's like eating candy mm -hmm. look at them this dark color they have man this tomato right here is the bomb now i'm telling you that one right there is the bomb um, she picked a couple green because there's certain dishes she likes to cook that she don't want a real ripe tomato in she just added some more in there just now. Look here, what? Peppers. Is that a banana pepper? What is that? Yes, banana pepper. Well, we planted those kind of later and they're already making. No, actually, we, we have a banana pepper that uh, I planted. I just only. You didn't realize it was yeah, banana yeah, pepper? Yeah, so. I think Ati Maurice gave you the seed, though. So you didn't know you already had some when we got those others. Um, man, we can never have enough peppers, I tell you. Um, and of course, okra, 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 but we love eating this okra. And I'm going to show you all about grilling this. I'm going to get around to it here, and I'm going to show you all about grilling this. So there it is, always harvesting, harvesting, yeah, harvesting. Oh, oh, yep, she's got more beans as well. Look at this. Yeah, I just think. And so she'll sit down here in a little bit and go through all these beans. So the deal is, you may ask why we freeze all this stuff if we travel and live part of the time abroad, right? Right. Well, of course we're still here too. And with it in the freezer, when we come back like in the fall. At least you have still more, you know. Right, we're, we're still going to have stuff to yeah, eat. We still have to eat. <laughs> so, usually how this works is we spend four or five months here and uh, we go over there for what usually maybe sometimes two and a half three months this trip might be a little shorter mm -hmm. and then we come back here for several months and um, we return over there again and how the math works out on that is that we skip the super hot weather here and we skip the, the winter the <laughs> yes. cold yeah yeah because me and james we have just uh you know we have an outside person so you can do outside if it is super hot or cold, right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, winter for us here means going out and feeding cows in a wet, muddy, miserable field. Or sitting inside, watching TV, doing nothing but eating. Eating and eating. Yeah. yeah. Again, oh, it's so fast. <laughs> yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. And we like to be active. I mean, you can't hardly hold us down. So, and we get grouchy when we're inside, man. We get and, that. And we're sniffing each other because yeah. we're bored, you know? Yeah, we start barking at each other and gnawing on each other, you know? Like, uh, row, 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 row. Especially him. Yeah. I'm a sweet I, 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 I'll tell the truth. It usually is me to start because I want out. And um, as well as I have nerve damage. I was in an accident a few years ago, and it left me with some pretty severe nerve damage. And uh, and some days when y'all don't see me put up a video, you can just about bet I'm having a rough time because I have uh, chronic regional pain syndrome, and I never know when it's going to hit me. And it's a little debilitating, and the cold weather brings it on, doesn't it? Yeah, you don't like cold weather. Yeah. It's in your situation, you know. The warmth. Yeah. I go, I do pretty good, but not the cold. It is crippling to me. And best I just stay out away from the cold. So if y'all wonder why we do this, there's a little bit of your answer why. It is also for health reasons. It really is. I, I enjoy the winter here. I love the snow and I love the getting out and hunting and all, but the cold, man, I just can't take it since my accident. Just enjoyment, just only for a while. You yeah, know? yeah. So, the same thing, the heat, 
I don't know where you all are from, but I'll tell you right here in Texas. Super it, hot. It's different. Yes, oh measurable God. hot. She's from a hot tropical country, right? You mm -hmm. think the Philippines, it's tropics. It's hot. They, so they hit there also like the 90s in Philippines, but they're not like the same here in Texas. Nope. I'm telling you, I have an ongoing joke. And now some of you out there, y'all going to get this. And some of you aren't. But I have an ongoing joke that I go to the Philippines so I can cool off. When you live in Texas or like her friend, Kelfe from Arizona, they understand that because Arizona gets just like here and hotter. Yeah, that's why my friends there in Arizona, they also escaped there from their main house. So, I mean, I mean her and their, hus and their husband was keep to go in Flagstaff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they'll head down to a different part of Arizona just to get away from that heat. But anyway, my ongoing joke is, like I said, I'm going to leave Texas to go to the Philippines to cool off, even though the Philippines is a hot country. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. It can be the same temperature. It can be 98 there or 98 here. But our 98 here feels like 108 or 110. And there, it just feels like 98. And it's it's bearable. And plus, we get those breezes coming off the ocean right there. Mm -hmm. And I like that. And I have allergy issues. And that salt air is so good for me with allergies. And when I go out there and that nice ocean water, it also does a lot for my nerve condition. When I was still healing from that accident, I would go out in that salt water and I would actually feel those affected areas on my body tingling. It was like some kind of miracle was happening. I tell you, that salt water is therapeutic. It really is. So, Melinda just continues on and we got three weeks left so she can still do a lot of harvesting in three weeks. Every day I, have, I harvest different kind of vegetables from, you know, from my plant. They're plants, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me take two. <laughs> and she's got cantaloupes coming on. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. got watermelons coming on. Yeah. Uh, we've got cucumbers hanging out here everywhere. And we might miss a little bit of that, but I'll tell you what, we had a cantaloupe here a uh, year before last, I guess when it was. Last two years? Yeah, that that thing one plant made something like 18 cantaloupes on it and it got down to where we thought it was done it revived back up and i think it made more cantaloupes the second time that did the first it was already done. yeah towards the fall we we're getting big old nice cantaloupes off of it like what in october or whatever wasn't we yeah yeah October, still so uh we hope for some miracle cantaloupe like that again. So when we come back here, we can enjoy that. But I tell you, cantaloupes are very common in the Philippines, and they y'all just call them a melon. There, yeah, right? melon. Yes. Yeah, they just call them a yeah. melon. Watermelons and cantaloupes are common there, and uh, we eat a lot of them there as well. And that's part of what we're going to show you guys. Some of you mentioned in some comments on that video when I told we were leaving about showing the farming over there. And that's exactly what Mel and I have had a plan to do the whole time, um, is to share and go to some of those places like that. We plan on popping up on some other vloggers too. Maybe we're gonna crash them. Maybe we're just gonna come in and raid them unannounced. <laughs> so, uh, bomb their videos, right? So anyway, once again, we appreciate all of you. Now, I want to tell you something. You are great subscribers. Melinda hadn't got to sit down and read all the comments you guys have been writing. She's been a little bit but busier. You keep, but you always keep updating me, you know, what's the subscriber comment, you know? Yeah. Yeah, thank you guys for all your wonderful <laughs> comments, you know. Y'all are, uh, you know. are amazing. Y'all about had me teared up earlier, I'm telling you. Like again now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, y'all are amazing. The things and the stories y'all tell and y'all share, it's pretty great. So, 
we uh, we appreciate that. It's a little inspiring because, uh, or a lot of inspiring, because it's a lot of work sometimes sitting down trying to do this. Excuse me, I got the camera in too close. Um, it's a lot of work sometimes trying to do this YouTube. You know, people think, oh, you just shoot a video and throw it up there, but I like to take a little bit of time to edit and give you something more than just walking out with a cell phone, shaking around everywhere and and showing a repeat of the same thing again and again. You, you really need to spend time to edit in. Yeah, I, I like to include different things. I like to make it a little bit more um, substance to it than just something just pure raw. And um, and I enjoy it. I enjoy sitting down doing that. I've always loved video and video editing. So you all encourage me to keep on. There's some days I ask Melinda, should we even be bothering doing this, right? And she always inspires me to keep on going. And you all have really inspired me to keep on going. So with that, y'all help us grow. I've mentioned this before, but y'all help us grow. We can hit one benchmark and then we can easily make it to another benchmark. And it's just fun for us to watch that grow and we can all grow this community together, this channel together. We had one Another of the subscribers community. earlier, he said that um, he and his wife have property in, in Negros, the island next to us. And, and he said that he's, um, he appears to be an American, but he says he's been in South Korea, but he, he said, you know, this is a, a great community where people with light minds can uh, come around and share. And that's that's true. That's what we like. Um, we like to find these people all have something in common. We can all congregate together, share our thoughts, learn from each other and uh, and entertain each other and enjoy life without all just the old smut on TV all the time, you know. So we appreciate you again very yeah. much. Yeah. All of you, if I had to sit here and list all these great subscribers, this would be a mega long video because I'd have to mention probably every one of you. And don't think I don't know your names. I have y'all memorized, don't I? Isn't that right, Daryl? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, David? <laughs> I mean, I could go on and on with all the different homesteads and uh spring creek just so so many of them uh you have a good memory so many of them i know who you all are mary lamb yes i know who you all are you're all in my mind you're all in my thoughts and we thank you